This is my homeland since the creation of the world till eternity. Let's refer to the Bible. God created heaven and the earth. On the seventh day He created man who sinned against the Lord and was expelled from paradise. The Bible states that paradise was located in the valley of the Euphrates, Tigris, Pison and Gihon rivers. Along with humankind, the number of sins spread as well. God flooded the world to wash away sin from the face of the earth. And only Noah, who had three sons, Shem, Ham and Japheth, survived the flood. Noah's ark landed on the top of Mount Ararat and the second life of humankind began. Noah's sons led the foundation of the nations of the world. The Semitic nations descended from Shem, Jews, Arameans, Arabs and others. All Indo-Europeans or Aryans descended from Japheth and they left the Armenian highlands and went to Iran, India and Europe. The remaining Aryans in the Armenian highlands were called Hai, Armenian or Armen. Japheth gave birth to Gomer, Gomer to Dogarma, Dogarma to Haik. Babylon was in the south of the Armenian highlands, whose governor Bel tried to subdue Haik and invaded the land of Ararat. On August 11, 2492 BC, a battle took place in Hayot Tor, where Habetosian Haik, with his trident arrow, shot from his white bow and drove Bel's army out of his country. He became the ancestor of the Armenian people, after whom the people were called Armenians and the country Armenia. August 11, 2492 BC became the beginning of the Armenian calendar. The toponyms of Haik were named after Haik's sons and grandsons. Aragats after Aramaniak, Armavir after Aramais, Yerazh after Yerast, Shirak after Shara, Masis after Masas, Geramatsov after Geram, Sisakan or Sunik Ashkar after Sisak, Garni after Garnik, etc. Foreigners named as Armen and the country Armenia after one of the grandsons of Haik named Aram. In the 28th and 27th centuries BC, the oldest state mentioned in the territory of the Armenian highlands was Arata. It was called the land of the divine holy laws. There are also mentions of Hayasa, Karani, Zubartu, Isuva, Tsopk, Suchmu, Alzi, Akhtsnik, Nairi, Diauhi, Taik, Ariach, Etiuni, Pegarama, Torgom's House, Melit, Malatia, Arme, Kumaha, Aza, Yerevan's territory, Urartu, Ararat states. Urartu or once Ararat Kingdom became the first United States of the Armenian Highlands, which survived in the 9th, 6th centuries BC. The dynasty was named after the first king Arame. Argishti built Erebuni Yerevan in 782 BC, today's capital of Armenia. During the Aramean period, other cities were built as well. Van, Armavir Argishti Hinil, Menua Hinil, Rusa Hinil, Teishebain, and also the canals of Rusa and Menua, 25 km and 72 km long respectively. The last kings of the Arameans had weakened. The real ruler of the country was Prince Parur Skyort from the Haikazun dynasty. By making an alliance with Media and Babylon, he destroyed Assyria and its capital, Nineveh, in 612 BC. The Haikazuns came to replace the weakened Aramean dynasty in the struggle against Assyria. The Haikazuni were followed by the Yervanduni dynasty in the 6th, 2nd centuries BC. The first king was Yervan Haikazun Sakavakyat, short living due to his short reign, 570 to 560 BC, after whom the dynasty was named Yervanduni, Urandid or Orontid. During the reign of his son Tikranes Yervanduni, the Archimedes settled in Persia. During the Yervanduni period, Yervandashat, Yervandakesh, Pagaran, Nahichevan, and other cities and fortresses were built. In the 2nd century BC, the Yervanduni dynasty was succeeded by the Artaxiad dynasty, during which Armenia reached to the peak of its power. Artaxias I united all the Armenian authorities in one united state. He built the capital Artashat, the cities of Zarehavan and Zarishat. Tikranes the Great, the grandson of Artaxias I, made some achievements and the territory of Armenia stretched between the Plague, the Caspian, 
and the Mediterranean Sea, he built four Tikranakert cities. Under the rule of Tikranes, Haik was the most powerful state in Central Asia. During his successors, Armenia remained a powerful state. In the first year BC, the Artaxiad dynasty fell. Armenia was the first country that adopted Christianity as the state religion in 301. Before that, Armenians were pagan and polytheist. The mythology has changed over time. Haik, Torkangeh, Sovinar, and other deities came to replace Aramast, Vahagan, Mir, Dir, Anahid, Astrik, Nane, Vanatur, Amanor, Spandaramet. Many shrines were built, dedicated to the deities. Legends and myths were spread throughout Armenia. The year of the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ became the beginning of the new calendar, first year. Two of his apostles, Tedius and Bartholomew, came to preach in Armenia. Armenian king Abgar of Edessa was the first to convert to Christianity. And in 301, during the reign of Tirdat III Arshakuni, Christianity became the state religion in Armenia. The first Catholicus was Gregory the Illuminator. In 303, the mother cathedral of Echmiadzin was built. In 52 AD, the Arsacid dynasty settled in Armenia and ruled until 428, fighting against Rome and Persia. During their reign, Christianity was adopted. In 405, Mesrop Mashtots created the Armenian alphabet based on the Mehen alphabet. Mutsurk, Vagarshapat, Dvin, Arshakavan, and many other cities and fortresses were built. In 387, Armenia was divided between Rome and Persia, but reunited a year later. In 428, Armenia lost its kingdom and became a Marspanid. Armenians continued to fight for their sovereignty. On May 26, 451, in the Avarai plain, the Armenian army led by Vartan Mamikonian defeated the Persians, who wanted to make Christian Armenians fire worshippers and assimilate with them. The struggle against the assimilation policy of Persia in 481 to 484, led by Vahan Mamikonian and Sahak Bakraduni, was crowned with victory. The Treaty of Navarsak was signed, by which Armenia regained its independence. The agreement, signed in 591, put an end to the conflict between Persia and Byzantium which began in the 570s. With this agreement, Armenia was divided between these two. In 639, the Armenian prince Theodor Rushtuni united the two parts of Armenia. By founding the Muslim religion in the 610s, Arabs united around it and began the occupation of territories. At the end of the 7th century, they captured Armenia, Georgia and Aghvang which then were united in the province of Armenia. By becoming stronger at the beginning of the 9th century, the rulers of Bakraduni restored the independence of Armenia and ruled in Armenia during 855 to 1045. During their reign, the cities of Ani and Kars, as well as a large number of churches and monasteries were built. The Bakradid kingdom was fragmented in the 10th century and in 1045, Ani fell to Byzantine troops and with that the Pakradid Armenia also fell. In 1040, the first Seljuk Turkish state was established in Central Asia, which began conquering to the east. In 1020 to 1080, the Turks conquered Iran and Mesopotamia and invaded Armenia several times. After the fall of the Pakradid kingdom, the Seljuks were able to defeat the Armenian Byzantine forces, conquer Armenia, and the whole of Asia Minor. The first Turkish state in Asia Minor was founded in 1086, which was called the Seljuk state of Iconium with its center Konya. During the same period, an Armenian state was established in 1080 in Cilicia on the shores of the Mediterranean Sea near the Armenian highlands. During the 300 years of the Cilicia kingdom, three dynasties followed each other the Rubinians, the Hetumians, and the Lucinians. Cilicia was proclaimed a kingdom in 1198 during the reign of Leo II. The capital of Cilicia was Cis. The cities were Adana, Tarson, Korikos, Ayas, Mamestia, Marash, Zeytun, and Arzaba. Egyptian Mamluks conquered Cis in 1375 and the Armenian kingdom of Cilicia fell. 
At the end of the 12th century, the Armenians started fighting against the weakened Seljuks. During 1196 to 1211, most of Armenia was liberated from the Turkish yoke under the rule of Zakaria and Ivane Zakarian brothers, who established a governorship. At the end of the 12th century, the Mongol Tatar tribes living in Mongolia in southern Siberia united under the command of Genghis Khan. They created a huge state by occupying southern Siberia, northern China, and Central Asia. In 1236 to 1245, the Mongols conquered Armenia and ruled here until the middle of the 14th century. In Central Asia, Leng Temur established a state with center Samarkand and continued his conquests. In 1386 to 1404, Armenia was subjected to the three destructive invasions and massacres of Leng Temur. After Leng Temur, the Turkic Akkoyunlu and Karakoyunlu tribes rose up and by conquering Armenia started a struggle against each other. Armenia became the scene of their wars. In 1467, Akkoyunlu defeated Karakoyunlu and their state quickly collapsed. In 1299, Ottoman Turkey was founded in the west of Asia Minor, which expanded by conquering the surrounding territories. In 1473, Ottoman Turkey conquered the Akkoyunlu state. In 1502, Safavid Persia was established with Tabriz as its center. Ottoman Turkey and Safavid Persia started a struggle against each other for conquering Armenia. As a result of the wars, Armenia was twice divided between Turkey and Persia in 1555 by the Treaty of Amasya and Kasre Shirin, also called Treaty of Zuhab, in 1639. During these wars, in 1603, Shah Abbas I of Persia forcibly deported 300,000 Armenians to Persia, where these people founded the city of New Julfa. After losing its statehood in 1045, Armenia was subjected to the invasions and domination of nomadic barbaric tribes. In the 11th to 18th centuries, there were few places in Armenia that maintained their internal independence. Among them were Sionik and Artsakh, which were ruled by their Maliks. In Artsakh, Sakhnakhs fortified places were established, which in the 1730s expelled Turks from Transcaucasia. The province, consisting of five Malikdoms of Hamsa, was recognized as autonomous. In the 1720s, Sionik went to war under the leadership of David Beck, who by liberating Sionik established power there. From 1728, after the death of David Beck, the struggle continued under the leadership of Mehitar Sparapet until the ejection of Turkish troops from the Caucasus. In the 16th to 18th centuries, the Armenian Catholicos repeatedly convened secret meetings and sent delegations to Europe asking for help. All of these efforts were useless. History has shown that freedom is achieved and maintained through armed struggle. And while the Armenians were begging for help from the developing Russia, the Russian Emperor Peter I, on June 12, 1724, signed a treaty with the Turkish Sultan, according to which Armenia was considered a zone of Ottoman influence. In the early 19th century, empowered Russia wanted to conquer the Caucasus as a gateway to the East and the Mediterranean Straits. At the same time, he started wars against both Turkey and Persia. Russian-Persian wars took place in 1804 to 1813 and in 1826 to 1828, as a result of which the Treaty of Gulistan in 1813 and Turkmenchai in 1828 were signed. According to these contracts, the northern part of Eastern Armenia, by liberating from the Persian rule, fell under the Russian rule. Russian-Turkish wars took place in 1806 to 1812 and in 1828 to 1829, during which Russia occupied Western Armenia but returned the occupied territories by the 1812 Bucharest Treaty and 1829 Adrianople Treaty to Turkey. At the beginning of the 19th century, the conquered people, Serbs, Greeks, rebelled against the Turkish dictatorship and became independent. By the decree of the Russian government in 1828, an Armenian region was established in the newly occupied territory of Eastern Armenia.
being afraid from the fact that the Armenians would strive for independence and the Armenian region would become the basis of Armenian statehood, in 1840 the Russian government abolished the Armenian region. It was divided between the newly created Georgian Emirate and Caspian regions. In the second half of the 18th century, the Eastern question arose, with the solution of which the European states sought to extort territories from Turkey and the conquered people sought to break the Turkish yoke. The Armenian question was also part of the Eastern question. In 1853 to 1856, the Crimean War took place between Russia and Turkey, during which Russia again occupied and recaptured the territory of Western Armenia. Fearing from empowering Russia, Europe acted against it and sided with Turkey. In 1877 to 1878, Another Russian-Turkish war took place, which was going with the Russian side's victories. The treaty in San Stefano was against the interests of Europe, and the treaty was revised during the conference in Berlin. Russia was again forced to return the occupied territories. And the reforms provided in Article 61 of the Treaty of Berlin were not only unfulfilled by the Turkish authorities, but also provided an opportunity to plan the complete eradication of the Armenian question. Sultan Abdul Hamid began planning the extermination of the Armenians. If there are no Armenians, there cannot be Armenian question. In order to annihilate the Armenians, he formed the Hamidiyeh cavalry regiments. During 1894 to 1896, he organized massacres of Western Armenians, and 300,000 Armenians fell victim to it. Self-defense battles were organized in many places, but due to massacres and deportations, the Armenian population became smaller and smaller, and Turks and Kurds settled in the places of the Armenians. In the second half of the 19th century, the feudal movement was one of the forms of liberation struggle of the Western Armenian against Turkish dictatorship. The Fedais or Haiduks, leaving their homes and family, held weapons in their hands and climbed the mountains to protect the Armenian population from Turkish Kurdish bandits. In 1908, a revolution was organized in Turkey. The Young Turks overthrew Sultan Hamid and came to power. Contrary to their promises, they pursued the ideas of pan-Islamism and pan-Turkism. The great Turan they dreamed of was to stretch from Asia Minor to the Altai, encompassing all Turkic-speaking peoples. And on this journey, Armenians were the wedge. In 1909, the Young Turks organized the Adana massacre and killed 30,000 Armenians. In 1912-1914, to the Balkan people fought against Turkey and became independent. Losing European domains, Turkey decided to get rid of the Christian element in its territory. In 1914, World War I broke out. Turkey entered the war as part of the Troika against the Entente. The war against Russia was taking place in the territory of Western Armenia. The Armenians organized five volunteer units led by Andranik Dro Hamazas Pkeri Vartan. They greatly facilitated the advance of the Russian army. The volunteers also took part in organizing the self-defense and safe migration of the population. Taking advantage of the opportunities provided by the war, the Young Turks organized the Armenian Genocide, the first genocide in human history. Armenian men were drafted into the army in the name of war and were disarmed and massacred. They forcibly collected weapons from their homes, arrested and massacred 800 Armenian intellectuals in Constantinople on April 24 to 29, 1915. During 1915, one and a half million Armenians were forcibly deported and massacred in Western Armenia and Turkey. In 1894 to 1923, 2,650,000 Armenians were massacred. Armenians lost most of their historical homeland. In many places, Armenians turned to self-defense. Armenians spread around the world, increasing the number of Armenians in diaspora. Despite the fact that the young Turk paramilitaries carefully planned and organized the Armenian massacres, the Armenians nevertheless led numerous self-defense actions in different places, in Zeytun, Tadon, Sasun, Van, Shapinkara Hisar, Musaler, Urfa and elsewhere. Self-defense battles saved the lives of many Armenians or allowed them to die with honor, holding guns in their hands. Let's turn back to Eastern Armenia. 
From 1828, Eastern Armenia came under Russian rule. The Russians pursued a policy of Russification. Armenian schools were closed several times. They tried to confiscate the church property. In order to break the collective power of the Armenians, they made administrative divisions in Transcaucasia without taking into account the national image. Finally, in 1905, they organized Armenian-Tatar conflicts, which killed 10,000 Armenians. Azeris are the ones who were named Caucasian Tatars or Turks. In 1914-1918, during the First World War, Armenians were massacred in Western Armenia and Russian-Armenian volunteer troops moved from Eastern Armenia to West. In 1917, they conquered almost all of Western Armenia. When the bourgeois democratic revolution won in Russia in February, the provisional government established a common province in the occupied territories, which raised hopes of creating an Armenian state. 140,000 Armenians returned to the newly created province. The course of the bourgeois democratic revolution was halted in October 1917 with the victory of the Bolshevik revolution led by Lenin. Lenin sought to restore the former territory of the Russian Empire. He began to sign contracts and get out of the war. Under the Erzincan Treaty of December 5th, military operations on the Caucasus front ceased. Lenin withdrew Russian troops from the Caucasus and the 400-kilometer-long front remained unprotected. It was guarded by only 10,000 Armenian soldiers, feudal groups of Andranik, Murat, Sepuhi, Togarma, Pandukht. Taking over Western Armenia, the Turks wanted to conquer Eastern Armenia, massacred the Armenians, joined the Turkish brothers and established the Great Turan State. The Turkish army attacked. On March 4, 1918, the Treaty of Brest-Litovsk was signed, by which Lenin handed over to Turkey the regions of Western Armenia, Ardahan, Kars, and Batumi. Continuing their invasion, the Turks captured Kars, Alexandropol, and moved forward in four directions. The Armenian people started a life and death struggle. On May 21 to 29, 1918, battles took place in Stardarabad, Gharakilisa, Bashaparan. The victory was perfect. The enemy was driven out, and after 900 stateless years, Armenia declared its independent statehood on May 28. 1918. In the same days, Georgia declared independence, and a new state entered the arena of history. Azerbaijan was created. On May 28, 1918, the First Republic of Armenia was proclaimed. According to the Batumi Agreement signed between Armenia and Turkey on June 4, Armenia was left with only 12,000 square kilometers. The flag, anthem, and coat of arms were passed. The ARF leaders set to handle the situation of the devastated country full of refugees. The army was reorganized and in the spring of 1919 the regions of Kars and Nakhichevan were liberated. The territory of the Republic of Armenia was 71,330 square kilometers with four states Araratian, Vanant Kars, Shirak, Sunik, Karabakh. The economy was restored the intolerable situation of homeless and unemployed migrants eased. In 1919, the ARF organized Operation Nemesis, retaliatory action against the organizers of the Armenian Genocide. Armenians in different parts of the world discovered and stoned the criminal Young Turk leaders. On January 19, 1920, the Supreme Council of the Entente de facto recognized the independence of Armenia, the successor of which is today's Armenia. On February 24, 1920, at the Paris Peace Conference, the Special Commission for Determining the Borders of Armenia presented a report proposal on the borders of Armenia, Azerbaijan and Georgia, which was to be decided by mutual agreement. In case of no agreement, this arbitration would be referred to the League of Nations, which would determine the borders of the republics, taking into account the ethnographic data of the area as of November-December 1920. In November 1918, World War I ended. Turkey, as a loser, withdrew from the war under the Mudros ceasefire treaty. On August 10, 1920, an agreement was signed in Syria between the victorious states, the Republic of Armenia and Turkey, which added 90,000 square kilometers to the 71,000 330 square kilometers of the Republic of Armenia, the provinces of Erzurum, Van, Bitlis, and Trabzon. 
the territory of the Republic of Armenia was 161,330 square kilometers. The agreement was signed by Aveti Saharonian on behalf of Armenia. The Armenian-Turkish border was determined by the arbitral award of U.S. President Woodrow Wilson. It is an inviolable, inalienable document which is the basis of the Armenian claim. Mustafa Kemal Atatürk, coming to power in Turkey, signed an alliance with Lenin and took weapons and money from him to invade Armenia. On September 28, 1920, Turkish troops entered Armenia without declaring war. By Lenin's order, Armenian Bolsheviks helped and handed over cards to the Turks. The Turks captured Alexandropol and were preparing to move to Yerevan. To save Armenia, the Armenian government took an undesired step. On December 2, 1920, an agreement was signed with a Russian representative in Yerevan, by which Armenia was Sovietized. Hours later, the ousted government signed an agreement with the Turks in Alexandropol to hand over the occupied territories to Turkey with the prerequisite of not moving forward. Thus, the Lenin Kemal Alliance destroyed the First Republic of Armenia on December 2, 1920. The new Bolshevik leaders of Armenia, obsessed with the revolutionary ideas, had forgotten their national interests. They organized terror against the former leaders. Karegin Nezde, who had defended Zangezur for years from the Turkish, Tatar, and Bolshevik armies, disobeyed Soviet Armenia and declared the independent Sionic Republic of Mountainous Armenia on December 25th. On March 16, 1921, an illegal Russian-Turkish treaty was signed in Moscow, by which Lenin handed over Kars and Surmalu to Turkey, by which the current Armenian-Turkish border was drawn. By the same treaty, Lenin handed over Nakhichevan to Azerbaijan, formed on May 27, 1918, fighting for Karabakh, Sunik, Nakhichevan. The treaty was reaffirmed on October 13, 1921, in Kars. In June 1921, by Lenin's order, the troops of Soviet Armenia entered mountainous Armenia. Nezde, dispersing his troops, went abroad with no suspicion that Zangezur, which he defended, would remain an integral part of the homeland. On July 5, 1921, by Stalin's decision, Artsakh was ceded to Azerbaijan, although 95% of the population were Armenians. The decision was made at a meeting of the Communist Bolshevik Party of Russia, which had no authority to resolve territorial issues. Javakh, Akhalkalaki, Ninotsminda, Talka, Aspinza, Kram was given to Georgia and Lori remained to Armenia. The USSR was founded in 1922 and Armenia became a part of it completely losing its independence. Armenia, Georgia, and Azerbaijan joined the emerging USSR. On July 7, 1923, by the decision of the leadership of Azerbaijan, the NKAO was formed in a part of the territory of Artsakh, only 4,400 square meters. It was done so that NKAO does not have a common border with Armenia. During the Soviet era, Azerbaijan pursued a policy of evicting Armenians from Artsakh and Nakhichevan, and the Armenians of Artsakh regularly appealed to the USSR leadership to join Armenia. According to the 1989 census, the NKAO population was 192,000, 76% of whom were Armenians. In 1922 to 1953, the USSR was headed by Stalin. In July 1937 and in July 1949, by Stalin's order, massacres were organized against the nation's significant people. The national values were banned, efforts were made to distort the national image and traditions of the Armenians. Religion was banned, atheism was introduced, the church and the traditional values became a subject of ridicule. 42,000 Armenians were killed in Armenia during Stalin's rule. World War II took place in 1939 to 1945 and it ended with the defeat of Germany. Soviet Armenia also fought in the USSR, sending 450,000 people to the army. During the war, Turkey was waiting for the defeat of the USSR, in which case it would attack Armenia, capture it and join with its Azari brothers. After the war, the global role of the USSR and the USA increased sharply. The years 1945 to 1990 are called the years of the Cold War, when the two superpowers fought against each other 
in the military and economic spheres, being a part of the hot wars behind the scenes. The UN was founded on October 24, 1945. On April 4, 1949, NATO was founded by U.S. efforts against the USSR social system. Stalin forbade any contact with the diaspora since 1937. In 1946 to 1948, immigration of the Armenian diaspora was allowed. 90,000 Armenians immigrated, many of them, about 13,000 people were exiled and killed in July 1949 by the order of Stalin. The national mentality was revived in Armenia in 1960. In 1965, the 15th anniversary of the genocide was celebrated. The Tsitsernagaber Genocide Memorial was built in 1967 and the Sardarabad Memorial in 1968. During those years, more than 70 people were convicted in Armenia for anti-Soviet activities. Soviet Armenia was deprived of the opportunity to fight for the Armenian cause. Seeing the failure of their peaceful struggle, the Armenian diaspora chose the tactic of armed struggle. The Armenian revenge actions that disturbed the peace of Turkey in 1973 to 1985 had a clear goal – to break the world's helpless, unjust silence for the Armenian question, to draw the attention of Western countries and force Turkey to take into account the Armenian question. In 1985, Gorbachev became the leader of the USSR announcing his plan for reconstruction, reform, and democratization. The Cold War weakened. The peoples of the USSR stood up and raised their national issues. Naturally, this would lead to the collapse of the USSR, for the preservation of which the USSR leadership began to fight. Believing the announcements of reconstruction, the Armenians of Artsakh started a struggle to reunite with Armenia. On February 20, 1988, the NKAO Regional Council decided to leave Azerbaijan and join Armenia. Mass demonstrations began in Armenia and Karabakh, led by intellectuals and national figures. Azerbaijan responded to the demands of the Armenians of Artsakh with massacres in the city of Sumgait on February 27 to 29, 1988. Hundreds of Armenians were killed, and 18,000 Armenians were deported during the three day massacre. In May 1988, they started evicting Shushi of Armenians. Massacres took place in Kirovabad, Shamkhor, Mingechaur, Khanlar, Tashkesan, Vartashen, Shaki, and elsewhere. In January 1990, massacres were organized in Baku. Thousands of Armenians were massacred. In 1988-1990, to 500,000 Armenians in Azerbaijan were deported, losing all their property. On December 1, 1989, the Supreme Council of the Armenian Soviet Socialist Republic and the Nagorno-Karabakh National Council made a decision on the reunification of Nagorno-Karabakh with the Armenian SSSR, by which the Supreme Council of Soviet Armenia recognized the fact of Nagorno-Karabakh Autonomous Oblast self-determination. On December 7, 1988, a devastating earthquake shook northern Armenia. The cities of Spitak, Gyumri, Vanazor, Stepanavan, more than 100 villages were destroyed. More than 25,000 people were killed and 500,000 were left homeless. 113 countries around the world, all the Armenian diaspora provided comprehensive assistance to Armenia. On August 23, 1990, the Supreme Council of Armenia adopted the Declaration on the Independence of Armenia. The USSR leadership, striving for the USSR to remain as a whole state, resorted to force. On April 30, 1991, Soviet troops together with Azerbaijani detachments attacked the Armenian settlements of Armenia, Artsakh and Shahumyan. Hundreds of people were killed and taken hostage. Azerbaijan, using the permission of the USSR leadership, decided in August 1991 to dissolve the NKAO. On September 2, 1991, the declaration on the proclamation of the NKR was adopted in Stepanakert. With this, Artsakh became independent, using its constitutional right as a unit of the USSR. A referendum was held on December 10. The Armenians of Artsakh voted for independence. Artur Mukherjian was elected as the first chairman of the Supreme Council. An attempt was made for state revolution in the USSR in August 1991 after which the USSR collapsed and the republics became independent. On September 21, 1991, 
the Second Republic of Armenia was proclaimed with 96% votes in favor. Levanter Petrosyan was elected as the first president. A real war started in NKR in December 1991. Armenian settlements were attacked by missiles and aircraft by Azerbaijan. From the beginning of 1992, the Armenians launched a counterattack. The enemy left Hojali of strategic importance. During the Armenian-Azerbaijani war, Hojali became a base for besieging and bombing the surrounding Armenian settlements. The Armenian military opened a humanitarian corridor for the evacuation of the civilian population of Hojali and started attacking on February 25, 1992. The population that fled to Agdam was massacred near it by their own nationals. It was organized by the People's Front of Azerbaijan to oust President Ayaz Mutalibov. On May 9, 1992, the Armenian freedom fighters, under the command of Colonel Arkady Tatevosyan, liberated Shushi and on the 18th, Lachin. Artsakh became connected with Armenia by land. Azerbaijani bases were eliminated. In the summer of 1992, the Azeris resumed their military operations and occupied the Shahomian region and part of the Martakert region. The Armenians stopped Azeris' advancement. Then Azerbaijan attacked all the border centers. The Armenians, counter-attacking, captured Kelbajar, Karvajar, which expanded the direct border of Armenia and Artsakh and became safe. The Armenians earned several victories and the NKR army was formed. The mediations of the OC, the UN and other international organizations led to a ceasefire, leaving the Armenians' progress unfinished. On May 12, 1994, a temporary agreement was signed. The issue of Artsakh is a crucial issue of the modern period of Armenian history. If we win in the Artsakh issue, it means we are still able to win and live. If we lose, we will turn the last page of our history, Montemel Konyan said. A civil war has been raging in Syria since March 15, 2011, between government forces and opposition forces. Islamist extremists have also joined the opposition. In the summer of 2014, Islamic State terrorist group joined. This war dismantled the solid Syrian-Armenian community that is the descendants of genocide survivors 100 years ago. In April 2016, the borders of Artsakh and Armenia were attacked by Azerbaijan. Despite the unexpected attack, the Armenian forces managed to keep the main border and neutralize the long-term goals of Azerbaijan and its sponsoring states. In that war, the Armenians lost 800 hectares of strategically important territories and positions. More than 100 soldiers were killed. The counterattack of Armenia was again stopped by Russian and other forces. Now, Azerbaijan, that was defeated and lost many territories, often tears and threatens with war, forgetting that the Armenian is the bearer of the blood of David of Sassoon. Return to your native land Masra in the same way you came. But if by any means you have risen up with arms and force, be forty gallons deep in the well or grind under the stone, they will come against you, as today, Sasma David, Turke Zaki. At that time, God knows who will regret, us who go for a war, or you who made us your enemy. There are more than 10 million Armenians spread around the world. They are far from their homeland, but everyone has a longing pain in their hearts for their lost homeland, the hope that one day it will be theirs. The land has a memory and is waiting for its true owner.